You know, when they see me rolling, they just start reinforcing the pavement because none of my tanks weigh less than 60 tons. We're taking on Clan Chromium Pigeon and a hasty escalation. Fatbird and I are at it again. This time he's taking the classic Rifleman 2C and the Vulture D, which has a lot of ATMs. It's a fantastic design against the Assault Tank Company that I have seen before in previous bat reps. Two Challengers and the venerable Draconis version of the Von Luckner. As before, in AC Escalation, we get our units randomly. I got my Challenger and Von Luckner up in the middle while he managed to game the system just a bit and got his whole force to deploy on the board. It's one of the trade-offs for taking a small unit count list. So the word of Blake is already starting off with one foot in the bucket as one challenger desperately races onto the board from off-board to see the combat that's going to happen in the middle of the board while he moves his vulture up and he begins taking shots downrange at the lead challenger right in the middle of the canyon. The Von Luckner with its Baztastic MRM and AC-20 doesn't make a really good long-range platform so I duck him right behind the hill as his first move. My plan of attack in this one is actually to move everyone up the center, kind of play a standoff game while the other challenger connects with the rest of the group, and then we push on in fours. Hopefully we don't lose all of our motive crits or what have you and end up being a bunch of immobile pillboxes, but even if that is the case, so long as all the tanks are together, we should be fine. But already that strategy is looking a bit shot up. At the end of turn one, the Vulture manages to connect the lead challenger with several ER munitions from its ATM racks and take some motive crits out of it, taking the bite out of the challenger and leaving it a 2-3 movement platform. But the clan decide to go ahead and charge out into the field, moving the Vulture slowly forward, walking forward, while the Rifleman 2C jumps down from the hill to get a closer shot. I respond in kind, I move the Von Luckner out, he can take some shots at long range. It doesn't have the armor to take on a sustained engagement, but it can survive for a while. But the Challenger manages to take more shots from the Vulture at range and loses another MP, moving it down to a 1-2 platform and leaving it practically immobile for the game. Return fire, though, is fairly fruitful as the Von Luckner manages to tag with, I do believe, its medium laser, but the Challenger manages to tag with its cluster munitions off the LBX, tagging the Vulture several times, opening up his right side, and even allowing the Challenger in the rear to throw a couple Goss rounds forward. But now isn't the time for the faint of heart. I need to close the distance, especially with that Von Luckner. Even though the Challenger's a little slow, I'm going to have to keep getting that long Von Luckner closer because it's it needs to get close. That Ultra AC-20 can be really impressive. And for at least a turn or two, he's going to divert his weapons at it because he can't afford to have a brick like that so close with such a nice main armor. So he does. He does a smart thing. He actually turns the Rifleman 2C and the Vulture at it, opening up, alpha striking with both, dealing an excessive amount of damage, and completely cores out the front end of the armor, destroying the Von Luckner in one turn's worth of fire. But the return fire from the Challengers is actually fairly fruitful as they beat in on the Vulture, tagging it multiple times with their Gauss Rifles and LRMs, take all of the rounds leading right just a little. It's statistically unlikely, but we managed to tag the arm multiple, multiple times and managed to hit the right torso multiple times. We don't quite breach it, but we do put quite a bit of damage against the Vulture. The Von Luckner, in its last defiant shot, manages to connect with the Rifleman 2C into its left leg, managing to take out quite a bit of damage on it. In fact, the damage is so severe onto both units that they are put into PSRs. And for the Vulture, it's just one PSR too many. Apparently having slugs going at some fraction of the speed of the light is just a little bit too much as the Vulture falls over face planting and taking a point of pilot damage right in front of the tanks. It's the end of turn three and the Vulture has some significant damage. A lot of the torso section is gone, the Von Luckner is completely destroyed, and the Rifleman 2C is for the most part untouched. It's got some significant leg damage from the Von Luckner in its last defiant bite, but it's not enough to really consider him. 
The damaged Challenger can't quite make much speed. In fact, it moves only one hex now, but it's still important to close the distance. I don't want to give him the option to increase the distance if I can avoid it. If I can, if I have the option, I'm going to make it close every time. While his buddy decides to swing forward as fast as he can, but now he's cruising. He's not going to flank anymore because we're in a good beat. We're, we've got a good range to him. It's about seven or so hexes away. That's kind of the sweet spot for this particular inner sphere tank. Nonetheless, the Vulture and the Rifleman 2C open up on the lead challenger, but that thing is built like a brick house. It's awesome. The shots just ring off of it. They just glance off that superior inner sphere armor, and there's nothing that those poor clanners can really do about it. Not this turn, anyway. And even though they did quite a bit of damage, the tanks are just fine. They return fire and manage again inexplicably lead a lot of the shots left. The vulture takes a lot of damage to its arm, manages to lose the arm, and manages to take an ammo crit not just the same turn and blows out, taking another two points of damage to the pilot, but the pilot manages to weather it. I think we've just ticked him off because he's completely fine, he passes his PSR, and he's ready to keep fighting. As turn 5 rolls around, both tanks are still fighting Trim. The lead challenger has got a lot of damage. As a matter of fact, at this point, he's lost his treads. He's not in a mobile tank, but he can't move any further. He's taken too much damage. Well, the Vulture has taken an excessive amount of damage to his right torso, right leg, and right arm. The Rifleman 2C stops and starts getting a nice shot on the lead challenger. They are focused firing, trying to get rid of the lead tank. Now my buddy's throwing everything he can into that lead challenger. The vulture is actually experiencing significant heating problems. I think it's pegging 15 or 16 heat right about now, and it can't afford to shoot all its weapons anymore, unless it's going to have other significant problems that the battered and bruised pilot isn't already considering. He's also in a knife fight with tanks, uh, the front end of some very nasty customers. Uh, these are tanks that when I was younger, back in the mid-90s, and I used to be a real bad clan munchkin with uh, targeting computers and pulse lasers, I was terrified of challengers because you just couldn't kneecap them. You just couldn't get rid of them fast enough. Nonetheless, I start diverting targets. I can't fire the LRMs at this target so close. As a matter of fact, I don't even bother with the Gauss rifle at this close of a target, the Vulture that is sitting right in front of the Challengers. And instead, I start lobbing the Gauss rifle and LRMs at the Rifleman 2C in the distance and just manage to hit it all kinds of points of damage along the Rifleman 2C. I don't quite put it down, but I do give it another PSR, which is always a good sign that things are moving the right way. And as the fuming, hull-ridden vulture moves forward, it begins laying its weight against the tank, kicking it forward, unloading a laser barrage into the lead challenger at point-blank range, opening up its ATMs with HE round after round flying into the turret of the tank. It blows out the fusion engine, leaving the poor challenger crew powerless in the dark with a fuming mech right on top of them. They load the LBX canister, charge the round, fire at point-blank range, hit the vulture, doesn't put it down, but it's budding right next to it, turns over, pans the medium pulse laser, and manages to put just enough damage to take the otherwise fuming, radioactive, strewn fusion engine out of commission. And as that fuming heap of metal crashes onto the lead challenger, his buddy, the Rifleman 2C, streaks forward to his aid, loading round after round into that brick house of a tank. The armor is practically melting off the challenger. Laser hit after laser hit has been glancing and hitting that thing since turn one, and now it is just a molten pile of powerless slag. I'm not even sure how it's still operating, but medals all around for that crew for staying in the tank up until this point because it has got to be some kind of fusion powered hell in there or at least it was fusion powered it's now battery operated and i would be just leaving bricks in my seat with the rifleman 2c relatively unfazed and his buddy having to take a couple of hits from the turns prior it's looking pretty grim for the word of Blake. They've got this three-story monstrosity sitting right in front of them, and they got a tank that is turret-locked and capable of only firing its munitions-based weapons. The Rifleman 2C jumps, leaps around, gets to the back arc so that the 
primary tank can't fire at it, the secondary tank pans its turret just as the Rifleman 2C is landing on the ground. He takes a snapshot with the Goss rifle and takes its leg off. And the final shot of the game, giving the win to the word of Blake. And that's been an Ouchie's Bat Rap. And thanks for watching. Yeah, I started with a burp.